enough with whether or not these beefs are healthy or truthful or whether or not they should even happen. Today, I wanna to talk about the inside of each one of these artists and what it takes to actually get to a point where you write music like this. In short, I'm a therapist that's gonna diagnose. I'm not gonna give you a code out of a book. I'm gonna give you my own personal slash professional opinion because I do this every day. And I'm gonna tell you what I think about Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and J. Cole. We could go into a whole bunch more, but these are the main key players at the moment. And I'm gonna tell you what I think I'd diagnose them with. I'm gonna tell you what I think I would, how I would treat them. I'm gonna tell you what I think they need in order to, uh, I don't know, be the healthiest people they can be. And I'm also gonna tell you what I think got them to the point where they are today. I'm not a historian, I don't know their lives. You know their lives way better than I do. You know their music way better than I do. You're gonna tell me I'm wrong about dissecting their past and where they've come from and what they've lived through because you've seen all their music. It's okay. I'm gonna give you the mental health perspective of what each of these guys are like. It's not gonna be intentionally mean or hurtful. It's gonna be my opinion as a therapist about what exactly goes into the making of somebody who would do a rap beef like this, somebody who would create diss tracks the way that they have recently, and even to the J. Cole point, somebody who would bow out of doing something like this, because I think it's something that's missing when it comes to social media is forget whether they do it or not, it's fine. And if they do it again and I listen to it, I'm gonna look for the mental health or mental dysfunction in it. But whether they do it or not, again, isn't as important as what actually created this beast to begin with? What actually makes someone be able to get to the point of doing this? That's not good or bad on a person. Like these people are tremendously talented, talented enough that they become superstars in their own right by creating music, by writing lyrics, by creating beats and standing on their own two feet. And we know in the rap industry, you better stand strong and tough and you better hold your ground because people are gonna come at you. I'm new to this whole thing but I'm not new to therapy. So what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna start one by one. Drake, you're first. I think, this is my opinion, Drake is kind of the Hollywood of rapping. Drake is the one who is the persona of popular and mainstream and can kind of float in and out of different, maybe genres of singing and of rapping and has a huge backing, I think, from media or some kind of money, some kind of backing and management, where he is just kind of everywhere. You see pictures of him, you see commercials, you see him flashing all over social media with different things, and he's been around a long time. The trouble that I have with Drake is he seems a little bit too confident about who he is. He seems a little bit above everybody else. Uh, people throw around the word narcissistic. I mean, I think almost everybody in this position of entertainment where they are, all of these people, have to be a little bit narcissistic. They've got to have that self-centered ego type thing to be able to make it and survive. But he does seem a little bit more in the self-focused, look at me, I'm above everything kind of way. So as a therapist, when I look at him, the way he carries himself the kind of swagger he tries to walk around with, the smoothness of how he tries to talk, the way I've seen him in certain videos with women or with younger women. I saw one video where he was on stage with somebody who said she's 17. And then when he heard that, he still went up and kissed her on both cheeks and then the lips. I don't know where that was from, but let me tell you, as a 55 year old guy who's married, has children, has treated a lot of people in almost 30 years in the mental health field, there's something wrong with that. So the slipperiness of Drake is what I'm concerned with. The slipperiness. The slipperiness is 
he's elusive and he kind of just floats in and out and he goes kind of under the radar. And I don't know whether he's got protection that keeps him out of, you know, he made this one quote or one line in, in one of his raps uh, during this beef where he said to Kendrick Lamar, you know, if I was doing something with younger people, I'd been arrested by now. Well, you know, that's not true. People can buy off people all the time. People can get their way out of things if they have enough power. And I'm just concerned with as much power, prestige, and in the limelight that he does have, if he's not kind of almost above the law a little bit. So the slipperiness of Drake, the kind of Hollywood style that he carries, he doesn't seem like the mainstream hardcore rap artist to me. Seems like he floats kind of in between pop and rap. That's to me. But mental health wise, he just seems slippery. If I had him in my office, I would lean towards the, the, remember, saying somebody is narcissistic is not saying they are a narcissist. That is a very extreme diagnosis. But being narcissistic is kind of like, man, you seem to always find a way for it to be somebody else's fault. Or you seem to always find a way to get all the attention and pull it towards yourself. That's where I lean to you to give me your opinion on these. Whether you like Drake or, or love Drake or hate him. I want to hear your opinion on these because this is a mental health perspective from a distance saying, I don't know, man. And in this beef, he just kind of pulled back at the end. It's like he almost fizzled out at the end, giving up. Like, I don't know if he didn't have anything else to give or if he was feeling a little scared and like, man, I don't know. And then recently, you know, one of his homes, his bodyguard got shot. So I don't know if he is, if he's just laying low and hiding. I don't know if he's planning something or I don't know if he's really, really scared. The point is he's not going to show that. If he's the guy I think he is, he's going to wait. He's going to stay away until he actually feels strong enough to come out and say something for himself. But I don't know that he's going to go toe to toe like a Mike Tyson in a boxing ring. I can't see him doing that. So that's Drake. When it comes to Kendrick Lamar, whole different beast. This is the Mike Tyson. This is, and I don't have any, any stock in any of these guys, honestly, because I don't know him well enough to know this, but he seems a little bit more from the streets. He seems a little bit more from trauma. Uh, and I got to say with Drake, just going back to him real quick, with him acting the way that it seems like he has in some inappropriate situations, maybe there has to be trauma there somewhere. There has to be some kind of trauma. That doesn't mean abuse necessarily. It just there's something going on in the history that would allow him, especially being a father to act inappropriately at different points. Could be the limelight, could be the attention, could be a lot of things. I just can't put my finger on it. That's why it's slippery. He just is elusive and he's not going to admit to anything. He's not going to come clean. He's not going to say, yeah, I probably need to clean this up or do this different or be better here. I'm not sure I'm going to hear that from him. Kendrick, the Mike Tyson, the bulldog, the viper, the guy who I feel like he got triggered in this whole situation at some point. And when he gets triggered, he goes for the throat. He is going to take you down and he is going to step on you after he takes you down. And I saw it rap after rap with this, not just in the words he used and the beat he has and the style of music, all of it. He switched up every single time he did one. He came from different angles. And when he did uh, the Meet the Grahams, <laughs> I don't think that song should stay out. But I think what it showed was if you threaten me and you back me into a corner, I'm going to do everything I can to obliterate you. And I feel like he was triggered enough that he almost went outside of himself and it was happening and he was going to do it. And there was no turning back. Almost when somebody glazes over, you know, and you see somebody get in a fight and they pummel somebody else and then they come to and they're like, I totally went. My eyes widened out. I was out of it and I just acted. And I feel like that's what he's done here. I feel like he has come from trauma. I feel like he has come from abuse. I don't know the therapy any of these guys have had in life. And if they have, I don't know that there's a therapist strong enough to be able to hold their ego. I would love the opportunity to sit down with them one time because I think, you know, when you get in front of somebody like this, it's this strong of a force, whether it's a Drake, Kendrick, or J. Cole, honestly, especially Drake and, and Kendrick, you have to be able to contain the room and you have to be able to talk to them like regular people, not talk to them like they are bigger than anything. And that's really tough to do because they come at you with a strong force, I think, over and over until you can finally break through that. But I don't know the therapies had, but people said in the Mother Eye video that he was not abused, that it was his mom that was abused. And he saw, 
his mom getting abused and it was tragic and traumatic and I can imagine it was. But then there was a line towards the end of that song that hit me and it was a line that said, they kept asking me over and over if my cousin did this to me and I said, no, I said, no, I said, no. But then he said, we had to watch our mothers go through this. We had to watch our mothers get abused basically. And then we had to do it to each other. I saw that one line in there and that, that told me, I think he was abused. I think he was molested. I think he was manipulated. I think he was hurt and forced to do things maybe he didn't want to do. I don't know that. I'm just reading it through the lyrics. But he strikes me as a guy who's wanted to change who he is. I don't think he's been perfect. Obviously, there's accusations or proof. I don't know which one, allegedly, that he has hurt uh, the mother of his children. I don't like that. But from what I've seen, he's owned that. And he said it and he's talked about it. I, from what everything I can tell, you tell me if I'm wrong. But I think he's tried to be a different man. He's talked about God. That doesn't make anybody awesome, right? By the way, just because you talk about God and faith, it's how you live. I feel like in this instance, he went outside of himself. I think he went outside of his faith. I think he went outside of who he is as a man and became a different beast in this whole thing. And I don't think he really likes it, but I don't think he can back down from it given his personality. Wouldn't put as much of a narcissistic bend on uh, Kendrick. Uh, I would put more of a, a little bit more of a PTS bend on this, which creates a lot of intense anger and rage and reactivity when he gets triggered. So PTSD gets triggered even from 20 years, 30 years ago from childhood. It can get triggered through a sound, through a sight, through words, through actions. And when you get triggered, you go back to that state. The difference is he's not a child anymore that gets abused. He's an adult that's grown up and able to stand up and defend himself, and he's not going to let anybody stand in front of him and try to take him or his family down. And I think somehow when Drake got personal to the family, I think is what I've seen, he reacted. I think there's a lot of PTSD there, and I think he's got a lot to work through with that. And I don't know if he has already, but this situation, I think if I talk to him today privately, I think he might say, I went too far. I, I did it on purpose. I wanted to do it because I wanted to show him he is not who he thinks he is. And I am the guy who's going to come out on top, much like Eminem would do. And, I, and when I do it, I go 100%. Like I'm not backing down. But I don't personally, I think I went too far. And personally, I think, you know, if I had to do over again and, and everything was clear and even, I might not go that far. Uh, because he's got the capability of going that far, but he just doesn't know how to pull it back at different times. So I think appealing to his fatherhood, appealing to his character, if that has changed and appealing to his faith, I think he would have to. Nobody can have faith in God and do these things and write these lyrics uh, and stand there and say it's completely fine because that doesn't act in alignment with that. So that's Kendrick. Now, J. Cole. He is a guy who I think has been at a different place in the past and now is in a completely different place. I think he's grown. I think he's matured. I think he's found a different peace in life. And I think he was playing along with the rap game for long enough. And then when he got in the middle of this, thought this is way deeper than I want to be in and I don't want to do this anymore. And so he backed off. And I remember that very day when I said, I'm so proud of him because I think that's what it takes is for us to stand up and be who we are inside. If you are a hate-filled person and you want to pummel people and you want to take them down and you want to insult them and you want to hit below the belt, you do what you do. But if you're a person who wants to live at peace and you're a person who wants to be able to live with people and amongst people and try to be a good father and a good husband as a guy and a good friend, then you need to stand up with character. And I think that's what J. Cole did. I'm getting out of this. I thought it was the best decision ever, especially to do it so quickly. And then he can move on in life and he can live at peace and let all of that stuff play out without him being in the middle of it. Because I think he was a different person and now he is a cleaner character that just wants to be in harmony. And, you know, to create music together, you know, to do things together instead of against each other all the time. And good for anybody who wants to do uh, diss tracks and all that. But, but he doesn't want to do that anymore. So I think with him, I think he's had a lot of therapy somewhere. I think he's had enough enlightenment to be able to see, especially when he talked about where he came from. And I think it was the streets and I think it was some trauma and seeing a lot of aggression and violence that he's been through enough. And I think somehow he got enough help that he thought, I need to walk in a different light 
or I'm just going to be a bitter, hateful, resentful person. I'm going to act out on other people and I won't be good to anybody that's around me. And so I thought that was pretty cool. And I think he stayed in that light and kind of stayed in the background, which is more endearing and more appealing, I think, to a lot of people as the days go by. He's not worried about winning rap beefs and disses with people. He's worried about who people see him to be. Now, in terms of therapy, the challenge with treating any of these, J. Cole being the easiest, because I think he's enlightened enough to say, yeah, I've been this person and now I want to be this person. And so I've figured out a new path for myself. Ongoing therapy would be really good for him. But you know, you can't do therapy with somebody who doesn't want it. You can't do therapy with somebody who comes in, like Kendrick Lamar sat down and said, absolutely, I would never change a thing. He, I would take him out, I want him to die. I want to call him all these names. I want to treat him as small as I think he is. Then I'd say, wow, it's kind of ruining your vibe, isn't it? That's kind of ruining your days. It's like he's living in your head. I don't think Kendrick would say that to me privately. I think he'd open up. I think he would share. But I think Kendrick would have to decide who am I and how much more am I going to do this? Because to stay on top, you have to be that. You have to keep doing that and find a way to do it. I would love to know what his opinion is on whether or not, who he, okay, how he wants to be perceived as a therapist. That's one of the questions I would ask. How do you want to be looked at? How do you want people to see you? Do you want them to see you as the guy who wrote these lyrics? Do you want to see him as the guy who wrote these lyrics? The one who's talking about um, Drake this way? And the one who's, you know, really just pummeling him this way? The one who talks about your son and your faith and where you've come to after all these years, then you have to make a choice. And let's talk about where that anger and that where that pummeling came from. Where did it come from? Where did it start? Well, it started when somebody was pummeling you, so to speak, emotionally, physically, whatever. Somebody was doing that to you, and that's where all of that began. So we go back in the past. Trauma, PTSD, do some EMDR with him, which is a treatment that would help desensitize the brain to all of that trauma and help him whew, breathe a little bit more. So I would do some, some treatment with him. would love that opportunity to do that because I think in time he would realize, man, I can unburden myself a little bit. I don't have to be weak. I don't have to be soft. You can still be super tough. You can still do rap, beefs, a lot of the ways you want to. But the challenge is you can't keep doing what he just did and still say, I'm a person at peace. I'm the father I want to be. I'm in a relationship the way I want to be. I've got the character I want to be. I'm a child of God the way I want to be. You can't do those. Those two don't match up. And as a therapist, I would say, these aren't congruent. So you're either telling me a story or you're believing something that's actually not possible. And that's where we'd break that down. And it'd be super cool to see that happen. Drake, another story. I think Drake would sit in therapy and I'm not sure he would stay, to be honest with you. Because I think the more he's confronted on what I talk about with his past, with some of the things that don't match up, with the persona that he's trying to give to the world versus who he is as a real person, I'm not sure they would match up. And I think he'd get uncomfortable and I think he would maybe think it's useless and this is stupid and I don't know why I'm bothering with this because my ego is big enough that I don't need to talk to somebody about problems because I don't have any problems. Now, if he did open up and he was honest and there wasn't that tinge of narcissism there, he would feel about uh, the, the result of all of this and what place it puts him in. And he'd have to find out who he actually wants to be in this world. Not a player, not somebody who's a manipulator, not somebody who's trying to you know, play a game, not somebody who's trying to take advantage of people, but somebody who's trying to give something to the world and create something for the world. But I don't know that he'd stay in therapy, to be honest with you. I think it would stop. Most of the people like him, at least this is my perception, I'm not telling you who they are because this is all just speculation of what I see. But that typical personality would have a harder time. If they were sitting in front of me, they'd be like, you're a piece of crap for judging me like that. I'm really not judging you. I'm judging what I've seen. But I'd love the opportunity to see something different. It's just that I feel like Drake is behind so many walls. I guess that's what I mean. I feel like he's behind so many walls that it's hard to get into the inner circle there. And even like physically with him, emotionally, he's got so many walls that it's hard to get to the core. And I think with Kendrick Lamar, it's abrasive at the, at the wall on the outside. But once you can break through that abrasive wall there, 
that's so protective of him, then you can start to see where the wounded part is and you can actually start to heal that, which would actually make him stronger in the end. And then again, like I said with J. Cole, I think he's probably had some help and he's kind of gotten some clarity with that. But I'm telling you, it's hard to deal with egos. It's hard to deal with personalities that are so blown up. And bottom line is hurt people hurt people. You hear that a lot, right? Hurt people hurt people. And when we try to hurt people, it's because we have something inside ourselves. We can't deny it. You're not going to come out and trash somebody else unless you have been there yourself. Because how fun is it to bully somebody? How fun is it to just pummel somebody over and over again? Unless you're in elementary or middle school and you want to just build yourself up and have a bigger ego. So now's your chance as a therapist here. One last thing I wanted to say, accountability. The answer to all of this for these guys is accountability. It's not, they have to be dramatically different. I just want to see, I don't need to see apologies. I don't think apologies need to be done here. Honestly, I think it's part of their industry. But accountability is a big thing. And I learned in graduate school as a therapist, what's important, Tom, is what you do after what you've done. What's important is what you do after what you've done. When you make a mistake, what's important is what you do next. So the accountability is, I'm going to own my part of what I did. Accountability for Kendrick would be like getting to the point where he just took that that one song down that was so abrasive, especially with the children, because I'm so concerned about the children. The, that's the other thing. If you're a father and you put music out like this, you've got to know your children are going to, number one, hear that music. And if it's about you, how devastating is that? And number two, if you wrote it about somebody else and they're going to say, how could you talk to, about somebody else that way? It's going to come across bad either way. So it'd be like Kendrick taking that song down. It'd also be like Drake saying, look, okay, here's where I cross the line. Here's where I need to be able to mend some fences so that we can come together. That's all it would take. Your turn. You let me know what you think. You let me know your opinion. They have been amazing so far. I do my best to respond to them. And I can't wait for the next edition of what this is. More to come. Therapy, Kendrick, Drake, J. Cole. We'll see you on the next Reaction Therapy. <laughs>